This is the booth of IMEC and uh, Whole Center presenting thin film transistor technology on flexible plastic film and uh, electronics thinner than paper, as we call it. So this, these are playing cards, right? These are playing cards with our partner company Carta Mundi. So this is a famous company making playing cards, the number one in the world, or? They, they, you, you most likely know them uh, more from their brands than from the company name. They make Monopoly, Uno, Magic the Gathering and this kind of brands. So it looks like normal cards, but there's printed electronics inside? Yes, this, this is not, not a normal card, this is a connected card. Because uh, in, uh, in uh, each of these cards there is a small, small plastic chip inside and uh, actually the inside is looking like that. So it's an RFID tag. Uh, with, a, with a standard commercial RFID antenna and a plastic RFID chip on it. So here is the chip. There is no silicon. It's all made of plastic. And this is a 12-bit RFID transponder chip. That's cool. So on this kind of chip they can communicate to, to a reader device that was specifically made for the purpose of this project. So here you see the reader and uh, here you see the interaction of the reader with a, with a game card. Trying to from this side, here is two, here is the king, yeah, what we show here, just for the sake of this small demo we have a game of higher or lower, so you need to guess cards and you need to guess if the next card is going to be higher or lower than this card, so let's say, let's say we believe that the next card is higher, higher than one, I think it's higher yeah. than one, so king is higher, let's do the king, what a, no, not correct, not correct, we did not guess right, but this, this is the game. All right. This is the game. And actually, what, what the, pur the purpose of this game is just to show that uh, electronics can be inside the paper. You can't feel it. You can't see it. It's very important for the cards. So it feels like exactly like real playing cards. This is exactly like a real playing cards, and therefore we say electronics thinner than paper. So the thickness of this technology is uh, below 50 micron. I think this is perfect for magic tricks. For magic tricks, absolutely. You can sell some... Uh, the magician would know what's in the on the other side. And what are we looking at here? Here's the way how, how we make this technology. So this is a plate, uh, sheet by sheet, sheet to sheet processing. Uh, and as you see here, the very thin plastic film is laminated onto a uh, temporary glass carrier wow. substrate. And this is, the, this is the electronics. So these are the different test structures and different chips that you see in this area. So it's processed on a plate. And the, the foil is removed from the plate and then it's cut in smaller pieces. What do we look at here and there? Yes, and this? these are the smaller samples. Actually, this, this is the most complex system that was made in this technology. This is an 8-bit microprocessor. Uh, what? 8-bit? 8-bit microprocessor. So, uh, in, in a sense, very, very, really? very, very similar to the first microprocessor of, of Intel that was made 40 years ago. Of ARM? Oh, yes, Intel. Oh, like Intel, like this an is Intel? This is the very, very similar spec to the first microprocessor of Intel. 40 years ago? 40 and this years is a, ago, but now, now it's made of plastic. So can you no explain what, what kind of uh, shape, what kind of, uh, what's going on in there? So if you, if you really look, look very closely inside, you see these individual small yeah. squares, and each square is a uh, thin film transistor. So this is a circuit uh, combining three to 4,000 of thin film transistors. It's a unipolar technology at low temperature on plastic foil, uh, and uh, actually this uh, is a full microprocessor operation, so it's a general purpose microprocessor. Of course it's very slow compared to we don't need traditional, so fast, no? traditional silicon devices, but there are applications where, where these simple small circuits can be, can be used. Can it, is it actually being used? Uh, I, I mean, are you... Are you able to run apps on the uh, run software on this already, or what? No, or that's, just, uh, that's a technology demonstration now to demonstrate what the thin film technology is capable of. At the moment, we are looking actually for use case applications with uh, with companies to to demonstrate this technology's many new applications. So, cars is the one of them. The next one will be smart packaging, uh, smart sensors, and uh, this kind of things. This is all on the roadmap. How far in the roadmap? Is it very soon? Smart. Uh, the, the first product of RFID. This is something that we are now uh, taking to a... Uh, you are actually bringing this maybe to millions of people. Yeah. Your millions RFID to, cards? To millions of gamers, How yes. about this? Processor. Processor. Printed processor. Processor uh, will, go, will go next. So, uh, and it, it, it can find applications in smart packaging and interactive, interactive goods and interactive paper and uh, things like that. So we have a roadmap of products. 
and we want to bring all of them to, first of all, to applications in very concrete, concrete cases, but also to manufacturing and volume. But you need a flexible battery and a flexible display also? Can you do that? Uh, yes, or some we, other guys we, are have, doing that we, have, we have that. We have an activity on flexible display as well. Um, and maybe I can show you some prototypes there. So this is this is another application of the same technology. As you see, the form factor and everything is very similar, but this is a flexible AMOLED display on plastic film. AMOLED? AMOLED, yes. So it's, in, it's the future of flexible and uh, foldable displays. You can imagine a phone that, that unfolds like that and becomes twice bigger when you need to read something. Can you make it happen now? Ha, ha, what do you need? Um, uh, we, Partners, we, investments? Or we, work, no, we, work, we work with the display industry, so I think real, realistically uh, we can expect these products on the market very soon. Of course not from us, we are the R&D organization, but from our customers who are the display industries. So you're an R&D organization, are you like uh, universities or what are you? No, I'm, IMAC is, is actually the world's largest independent R&D in microelectronics. So we, we, are, we are with more than 2,000 people and with uh, 600 companies in microelectronics partnering with us. And uh, this, is, this is the biggest commitment to, to R&D in microelectronics in partnership. Where are you based? They're based in Leuven in Belgium. Belgium. It's very close to Brussels. What are we looking at over there, the, that one? This is a smaller, this, this, yeah, I, I better show you, this is the same as we saw before, but I, I'm going to show you this one as well. Um, this is an illustration of how the, how the plastic technology is uh, processed on uh, uh, in, in reality, in a, in a foundry, so it's, it's laminated onto a rigid glass carrier for all the technology steps. And then, when devices are made, uh, we can we can just delaminate it like this. So peel it, peel it off and put it, for example, in paper, in plastic, in smart package, and things like that. Nice. And the peeling off uh, is that something that can be automated and uh, put into something else that's flexible? What is this? This is the same. This is the same technology on a smaller scale. So we have different variety of scales. This is the smallest scale. This is a lab, lab process. So we can we can be very very fast and very flexible in trying new things. This is a bigger scale. This is more for prototyping. So if you want to make hundred yeah. or one thousand of devices, this is the platform. And eventually, in a, in a real foundry, it goes up to several meters by several meters. And large, uh, so we hear the ID Tech X show. What do you think about this show? And what do you think about all these technologies around here? Th th this is a fantastic show. It's very good to see many end users this year, very, very strong support from the end user companies and very strong application cases that are driven by concrete products. So I think this, this is fantastic new, new thing in printed electronics. A lot of suppliers, very active suppliers, almost for any type of, any type of material equipment that you might need in the value chain of printed electronics. And uh, a lot of actually growing interest to, to the applications. And what do you do? Do you, do you make all this? What is your job? We are, uh, as an organization, we are an R&D. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, helping, I'm helping technical people to bring, to bring this to, to real, to real uh, applications and uh, to work with uh, application companies. Yeah, because there's a lot of awesome, awesome stuff, but we want to see it in real things. So you bring it over to those playing cards? This is the first. This, this is, is the, the first, first one. The first, right here. Please look, please look at the news. Follow, follow the news of IMAC and Hall Center. We will have more of that uh, during the year. So we are working on sensors. We are working on NFC techs that can work with uh, NFC-enabled smartphones. And we are working on uh, on uh, smart packaging projects and so on. So That uh, foldable display that you had over there is right here, right? Yes. Uh, what's the performance potentially? Is there how many pixels and uh, uh, how good does it look? A, a the per, like the, per, the performance, per, performance will be as, as the customers want. And customers always want large displays, very high resolution, very nice brightness, very low power consumption. These are all the things that we are helping our industry partners to, to tackle. That's going to be possible. Flexible, high resolution, high contrast, everything. Yeah, so the moment, at the moment we are developing uh, high resolution displays uh, on flexible foil. And a set of set of many many different technologies that actually need needed as building blocks to, to make it happen. Because Samsung has been showing flexible displays for five years, but there's now 
it's just the edge, but it's like uh, not really flexible. It's but you see, they, they become more and more flexible from completely flat. They become curved. You, say, you see the same in, in TV industry. And of course, it takes some time to, to move from rigid glass to a, to a new substrate. The such plastics, as flexible that plastics. is, that is uh, reliable and uh, okay. it's called... Uh, so you encounter so many, so many new things uh, working on plastic, both in technology but also in the application side. So reliability, mechanical properties in product, these are all new things to be discovered. It's never been done before for rigid, for rigid systems in glass. Right.